Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to what will be the final episode in the Naval Action Basics series. In this episode I'm gonna round off the uh, entire series by talking to you about DLCs and clan versus solo play. Now the video in the background will simply be me sailing around doing some resource management in my Indiaman. So don't expect anything fancy, it will just be me writing on. Now, by now you should have gained a pretty firm grasp of the basics of naval action and maybe even used the videos to choose whether or not to get into naval action. So one of the things you're going to be faced with is the possibility to buy into the different DLCs that accompany naval action. There's a few that enhance your in-game options, like giving you better paints, different flags, which is just cosmetic. Personally, my opinion on these, don't touch them unless you really want the full package. Then there's a few others that let you change nation, change your name, get it if you need it. But the prolific forger is Really, only if you need to change either your name, your account, your nation. As I use this frequently, either because they just shop around or on the PvP server because they get hunted down. But on the PvE, I don't really see the point. That will be up to you. The only of these in game feature DLC that I do recommend for anyone that really want to play naval action long term is get the Admiralty Connection. The Admiralty Connection gives you um, 16 extra warehouse slots in all of your warehouses anywhere. It will also increase your dock size from 20 to 30 and it gives you 5 more building slots which means an increase from 5 to 10. So it's a pretty good DLC and in the long run it's, it's money's worth. And that's a basic DLC. Now, the rest of them, I guess, more debatable, is all the ship DLCs. Naval Action offers you the ability to buy DLC ships. But what do DLC ships do? Well, a DLC ship means that you can, once every 24 hours, redeem a ship, select what kind of frame and planking woods you want to use, and redeem that specific ship as long as you don't have that ship in one of your docks already so if you're someone that just getting into the game and just want an all-round ship you need, you're sure you can always have a ship available to use maybe go down the DLC route I will however just point out that the, these DLCs range at a price from 9 euros to all the way up to 42 euros the smallest is the Hercules which runs at 9 euros currently and the most expensive is the um, the new victory edition that's out which cost you 42 pounds oh, sorry not pounds but euros getting my currency mixed up here but 42 pounds just euros again euros i'll probably get it right by the end of the, the video 42 euros just to get a ship in the game I can actually be crafted with all the in-game resources. Personally, I've never bought any of the DLC ships. I don't see the point as I can either buy, craft or capture ships of the same type. So the options there, I want you to know it's there, but in my opinion, the ships are way too expensive. But if you are someone just playing around on your own and just playing infrequently so you don't have the time to grind either for the resources or the money to actually buy or build your own ships, a DLC ship can be a viable option. Just note that when you get a DLC ship, if you buy one right as you start the game, you might not be able to crew it. As you still need to have enough crew to sail the ship, the minimum crew to be able to use it. An undercrewing ship takes a bit of skill, so 
buying one of these mid-range or even the big tree if you're just beginning in naval action will just mean that if you spent more money on something that will just be sitting there for a very very long time before you can actually sail it the last thing i'm going to touch on with the dlc ships that some people that have dlc ships either the pandora and the trincomalee which some have been given or some of the other ships they may have bought use these to grind the seasoned live oak the seasoned teak and seasoned white oak again it can be done if you want to spend your money that way personally i don't think it's worth it getting the time put in to grind the items or find and capture the items in game i personally find more rewarding and better use of my money so just as check out the um drop pace on steam see if there's anything you fancy just be aware of the price and that you actually need the crew to actually man the ship before you can use it buying a dlc right off the bat might not be the best option check it out so the last subject as we head back from santo domingo to barney to pick up more resources is clan versus solo play Naval action as you begin makes you choose your nation. There's plenty of nations to choose from. I mean, whichever nation you choose will have a pretty active player base. Now, some of the minor nations in the game are also the nations with the lowest amount of players. And I think most of us, as we get into naval action, probably will have a pretty good idea of not what nation we personally want to play. I play Danish as I am a Dane. And that's where my heart lies. But whatever you choose, you'll find players around to help you out and get you going and point you in the right direction as you get into naval action. The only thing that makes solo play a bit hard in the long run is that you can't be self-sufficient 100%. You will rely on others to trade your items down the road or help you along to get to certain goals. And besides the personal solo combat, naval action is very much a soul shoot game. The chats of the different nations are pretty active, and most clans have their own, either Discord, TeamSpeak servers, or Facebook pages and whatever. And the interaction with other players just gets so much more enjoyable if you actually join in a clan. Now, clans can help you progress from whatever level you are whether you're just starting out or you're mid tier or if you're just high level it can also give you something else like recruitment training up new players um officers promotions to be part of the clan control etc all depends on the clan and how it's actually run and that is the next subject out there there are a huge variety of clans like in any other online to play a game some are very elite and requires you to put in so and so much gameplay some are more um, relaxed and just allow you to do your thing but just works as a community that supports each other if needed and some are in the mid-range they have a few rules a few requirements but basically let you do your own thing So how to choose and how to know what nation to pick? Well, coming in the game as brand new, it can be hard to know what nation has what type of clans. But generally, if you go like France, Spain, Great Britain, pirates, these are the major nations and they will have all sorts of clans in there. Casual clans, elite, more elite or hardcore clans if you want that. So choosing one of the major nations is probably a safer bet if you want something to choose from. Otherwise, I suggest finding some of your mates that might be playing the game, have them guide you into it, or check out the um, Naval Action Forum, um, or the Game Labs Forum for Naval Action. There's also a recruitment tab in there, both for the PvP and the PvE server, and you can rummage around and get in contact with people that way. However, that might leave you just waiting a bit, or leave you waiting for a reply before you actually know what to choose and that means you'll be 
sitting there waiting to choose your nation. Another great benefit of clan is the events. Now, port battles have been introduced, and that means they'll be attacking and defending the ports. And most nations also have clans doing um, privateer hunting events or uh, port raid events where people get together on the same Discord or TeamSpeak, whatever. And these are a huge amount of fun. So I definitely suggest that when you start out as a new player or a mid-tier or high-tier player getting back into naval action, reach out in your nation chat, take a feel for what kind of uh, clans there are out there, get in touch with some of the leaders or recruiting officers, and just make yourself known. Use the nation chat, um, even global chat at times. Um, Find some people you like to hang out with, have somebody help you a bit and see who you click with. And that way it will make naval action so much more enjoyable. Get into the social part and it will be great for your learning, it will be great for your progressing and your enjoyability, uh, enjoyment of the game. Enjoyability, I need to get things shorted. You know, the, your enjoyment of the game. But definitely, even if you're just a laid back, relaxed player that basically just want to do a bit of trading and a bit of combat on your own, maybe at times just interacting with others. There are plenty of clans out there that will leave you do your own thing, but have the option to support you uh, if you need anything or someone to answer questions or just guide you along. So even if you basically want to be on your own, I still suggest reaching out to the clans or at least to your nation get active once in a while in your nation chat and make your naval action experience so much more enjoyable that's basically the last of the words i'm gonna give you in this series of naval action basics i hope you enjoyed it i hope you've actually learned a few things i know there's some of the meta part, uh, most of the meta parts I've been leaving out because things change, numbers get switched around, new items get introduced and stuff like that. You'll have to figure that out either from others or on your own. But I hope you got a grasp of the basics, enjoyed the videos, and um, hope you enjoy naval action. Now, thanks for watching, and thanks for watching the entire series. Don't forget to leave a like or comments if any questions or anything else. And if you're ever in the Danish nation, reach out and say hi. Until we see you on the seas, sail safe.